All right, I believe we're live. So today I want to discuss um, the state of Michigan. It looks like we're going to have about 61 counties throughout the state issue uh, vouchers. And what I mean by that is, or well, starting, uh, let's see. I'm going to pull up the information real quick. So uh, the Michigan State Housing Authority uh, Development Housing Authority is opening the housing voucher, housing choice voucher waiting list 61 counties later this month. Uh, their federally funded program, also what many have, have known as Section 8, they'll be providing mental assistance essentially to families and individuals who have an income um, that have incomes. Now, generally, those of you that are on fixed incomes making around 400 all the way up to about 3,000 a month. I would think that that would be an acceptable range for you to be considered moderate, low income, low income, or extreme low income. Um, so what's going to happen here is on March 22nd, so today's the 19th. You've got a few days to think about this. So 20, 21, 22, so three days. And so it'll open in three days, and it'll open at 11, 11 a.m. in the morning. Now, I want to tell you guys from experience dealing with all 50 states, uh, as a consultant, then a lot of times this stuff can open at midnight. Okay. I'm not suggesting that they will open at midnight server time, but there's always that chance. Now to do a few introductions as we get started here. My name is Jay. I am the owner of section eight consulting.com. And unlike the uh, many different websites you see that are all over Google, um, I'm not baseless. Uh, most people know who I am. Uh, we work with around thousand clients a year, sometimes a little less, sometimes a little more. And uh, we work with clients to get housing vouchers, you know, they're, these are federally f uh, funded programs. And um, anytime it's federally funded, that means that anybody may apply for a voucher in any county in America. It doesn't necessarily mean you need to live there. Okay. Now, of course, some housing authorities prefer you keep it in their state or in their county, but there's a vast portion of them that do not. Um, if you are a client of our company, uh, you have booked casework with us. Uh, I would strongly advise taking uh, consideration of the state of Michigan and the 61 different counties. Now, again, March 22nd, 11 a.m. is what they're suggesting will be the opening time. And uh, the closing date will be Wednesday, April 5th. So, you know, you got about a week and a half. And I'd imagine there's going to be a large number of people wanting to apply. Now, uh, let's go over a few things of considerations when dealing with housing authorities, no matter where they are, and how you might want to adjust this. Now, first thing you should know is there are pre-application, which means they're trying to a process of elimination. They're looking for people that don't necessarily qualify, like somebody that may be 18, just got out of high school, uh, that feels entitled to a voucher, but doesn't fundamentally have enough problems or a low income to you know be able to get on the list and be effective at getting it quickly. Those of you that are 62 years and older, that would be considered a preference for those that have served our country and are a veteran, including the U.S. military or Coast Guard, could be a preference. Now, again, when we talk about low income, let's talk about different degrees of what low income means. Only one of them truly matters. So you have moderate low income, which would allow an attempt to, for you to get a voucher over a longer course of time. Then there are those that are low income, and then there's are those that are extreme low income. Extreme low income is around fifteen hundred a month or less, okay, and that likely would grant you some type of preference. Many housing authorities have a local preference. In other words, if you live or work in the area, but nobody is it's the truth, but never the whole truth. It doesn't mean that you need to live there. And it doesn't mean that you couldn't get a voucher there and then request the housing authority port that voucher to another county or even another state, okay? A lot of you are going off of old information and often I find that that information it tends to be a little bit perilous because most of what's published on Google and so on is outdated and uh, rarely in, uh, accurate in my opinion. So beyond that, let's talk about criminal histories and other things. For most of you, if you've not probably reasonably committed a crime in the past five years, I don't see why you couldn't apply. However, housing authorities and federal code of regulation does not like SO, sex offenders, those that have been convicted of the use of, trafficking of, or manufacture of methamphetamines. And then sometimes those of you that have committed an aggravated crime against another human being. In other words, you've hurt somebody and it's become aggravated. Outside of that, 
and barring that you've not done anything in the past five years, I do not see how it would matter. Getting a voucher is not a it really does not matter in respects to criminality. What does matter is whether or not the landlord is going to accept you. In other words, criminal history doesn't play as big a role as many of you might think. Okay. Uh, moving on from that, those of you that are disabled, look, I realize there's a lot of you guys that are, you know, anywhere from 60 to 108. Having multiple issues doesn't only counts once. Disability is just a disability and it can only be counted once as a preference. Uh, just because you've got, you know, cancer and also a heart attack, you're not going to get double the preference smart, okay? And I think that one of the other preferences we should consider is a more imminent factor, and that's domestic violence, where a person may have stalked you, where a person in a relationship may have hurt you. It can't be a friend, a family member, a relative, or somebody you met at church. It's got to be somebody that you've been intimate with, somebody you've been in a relationship with, where they mentally abused you, physically abused you, or stalked you, okay? If those things are present in the last 60 days or 30 days, then it might be applicable. Mom and dad treating you badly won't work, okay? Um, <clears throat> beyond that, homelessness carries a, a major factor of consideration for all housing authorities. But homelessness doesn't necessarily mean that you need to be the bag lady under the bridge with a buggy pushing it around, okay? Homelessness can also mean imminent, hom imminent homelessness where you're unable to afford the rent and you could be potentially evicted from your apartment for your inability to pay. It all could also be an impossible situation where um, you're, you know, you're currently leasing and uh, it's just become affordable. You're just continuing to borrow money from friends and family just to make it. And in homelessness, it presents in many ways. And uh, so that is a preference. Now, out of all the preferences, which ones do they really, really matter the most? Of course, housing authorities have you believe that local preference or working locally or living locally would be ideal preferences, but the ideal ones actually are the number one is domestic violence. Number two is disability. Number three, in my opinion, would be homelessness. And number four is being a senior 62 years and older. And I think that in some cases that might be mitigated even at 55, depending on where you're applying. Okay. Let me go ahead and shoot a link where you can go ahead and access the application aspect of this i'm gonna put it in live chat and i want you to know guys this is already in the description i'm just throwing this in extra so here's a direct link for you to apply okay i'm gonna address a few comments here daniel how are you this morning and uh and daniel goes on to say in most housing authorities you can only port a voucher after having lived in an area for one year we'll see that that's the kind of information daniel that that's misinterpreted that is not mostly the case, okay? That's your opinion of it. Um, moving on, uh, Tina Pinch. I'm 64, disabled with two displaced children. What should I apply for a voucher? Okay, well, so, well you're 64, so that's one preference is your age. Uh, two, displacement, which means you could have inclusion of uh, some uh, homelessness. And, um, well, you know, it's not about what you're applying for. Think about it this way. It's, with, it's like a loan, like you want to get a loan. You go out, you fill out an application, you see what you qualify for. It's not an option where you show up at the housing authority, excuse me, may I get a menu of vouchers and I'd like to select the one that I'm going to give. They're going to offer you a voucher based on the answers you give in your pre-application and primary. So <clears throat> if your primary application says you're disabled, so on, <laughs> it's automatically going to determine what they're going to probably offer you, okay? So it's not a situation of options and menus, okay? Your answers will literally determine what they're prepared or considering to offer you. All vouchers are a housing choice voucher, how it's funded, the string of funding from Congress. So let's talk about that real quick so we can kind of explain how that works, why you don't have a choice, but your answers will guide them to what they're offering and where the funding is coming from. So for those of you that are 62 years and older and you have a disability, then a string of funding from subsection 202 of Code, Code of Federal Regulation would fund that, okay? For those of you that are 18 to 61, it could be section 811 if you're both a young person and also disabled. If you're a veteran, then they may pull a string of funding from the program called HUD-VASH. Uh, if your person... Uh, 
that is suffering through HIV or AIDS, then they may pull the string of funding from HOPWA, H-O-P-W-A. And I could keep going around 130 times. So you don't get an, a, a, a window of options there. It's what you present as answers in your application to determine the outcome, what they do. Now, another thing, uh, now that Daniel, I remember Daniel was saying that most housing authorities in principle, we believe one year, okay? Let's talk about dispelling some other rumors, okay? When it comes to housing authorities, Yes, most, most of them you call, oh, yeah, well, you know, we got a 15-year waiting list. Well, that's a 15-year waiting list if you gave every worst possible answer. Somebody has to be first. Somebody has to be day one. Somebody has to be day uh, six months. Somebody has to be at the one year. Somebody has to be at the five year. And then the people that absolutely have no qualifying factors have to be at 16 years. So I think a lot of information is being fed to you guys as to – to discourage, dissuade, and it works because once somebody gets in your head and convinces you of the truth, but never the whole truth, then you would have it, you would, you're left to your own conclusions. And that is, even if I apply, it's going to be 95 years. No, it's not. And that, that that's, you know, 10 years of making these videos and servicing 20,000 clients. I know better. I don't take advice from people, uh, YouTube personalities and entertainers. I'm not here to ed entertain. I'm here to educate. And uh, as a company, we're here to get what they need. Okay. Uh, if I, if I based my reality on the research of YouTube and the research of uh, Google, then I'd be a fool. It requires reading millions of pages of legislation, titles, acts, uh, policies, procedures, data manuals, um, scoring metrics. That's what it requires dealing with companies that actually underwrite the policies for housing authorities. And if you read that information, at that point you can offer what would be an educated point of view, not just a wild guess based on what the housing authority was in the 1980s and some frivolous attempt uh, at uh, understanding what they were sharing in some ridiculous uh, Facebook group about vouchers, you know. That's not what this is about. We want to do a quick introduction, as maybe you know, I rescue cats as well. And we have a visitor today, and she's very adamant about being in the video. This is uh, Little Mama. And uh, it, I didn't set this up. She simply needs her attention, and she often visits her videos. So she says, hello. She's an unusual uh, swirl kitty. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, marvelized. And uh, she's a big personality. So I'm going to answer some more questions in a minute. Hey, guys. Hey, um, guys. You know, when giving advice to clients and dealing with clients, I want you to understand that not everything that I'm going to say to you is going to be a situation uh, where you may favor it or you like it. My job is to tell you the truth, whether you like it or not. And some people get mad about it. Some people won't. I understand that. But uh, I just want to make sure you understand that, you know, that not everything that you're going to hear is going to be favorable. Let's see if we can get her to calm down. <laughs> Come on, Mama. All right, so Barbara Havens, this is very hopeful information. I'm glad to hear that, Barbara, and good morning. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Finch says, thanks again. Kiss to the kitties and hope your sunflowers are growing. Yes. Um, now, if y'all are wondering why there's so many other things being added into the video, well, you know, I incorporate some of my personal life into my professional life. That's just how I choose to operate a channel that I own and can do what I want with. Uh, and yes, I do have a garden of uh, sunflowers that are growing up to 12 feet. So, good Redmond, impressed by my local housing authority. Uh, last two months sent me two checks, refunded what I paid in rent, just did a recertification. Excellent. And Miss Finch goes on to say, Hi, Mama. So, you know, talking to my cat, Tabitha Taylor, I am homeless and I had a, I had filled out an application everywhere. Well, you know, it depends, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Taylor, as to whether or not you pulled out county applications, city, state, or federal. You know, there are a number of type of vouchers and solutions that can be potentially get you out of that situation within 30 to 60 days, um, depending on your case criteria and uh, the preferences, the things you're going through. So, you know, guys, I'd encourage you all to check out Michigan. I'm trying my best, but little mama, my cat, is really, really... Really trying to bust up the video here. Um, come on, girl. Please stop. So she wants to be part of it, my little Hollywood star. Uh, so I just bet her and talk to you, okay? All right, so I would really encourage you all to reach out and try to uh, attempt to at least apply for some of the 
uh, counties in the Michigan because, you know, they're, they're going to be issuing a, a very large number of uh, vouchers throughout the state. And some of that could potentially come with portability. And if it does, then why would you want to wait on a New York waiting list for 15 years when you could potentially get it somewhere else where the waiting list is two years if you gave the worst possible preferences and then as little as a few months if you gave the best possible answer. So there's many, many ways to deal with this. After deal with 2,800 housing authorities over a course of 22 years, you start to see when you back up from all of that, you start to see that there are some gaping holes in there. And I think that if you understand how to utilize that, it, come on, mama, please, 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 please. This video is going to be a wild one. Come on, girl, please. Well, guys, I think uh, I'm going to address any other comments y'all have, and I'm sorry about the cat. She just, if she decides she needs attention. There's no, there's no stopping that. Uh, and unfortunately, I don't uh, block my cats from the, uh, videos so um hopefully she'll be pacified for a minute so i would encourage you all to get out there and apply you do have all the way to april 5th it should start 11 a.m keep in mind that server time is at midnight so you may get lucky in that respect so you might want to set your alarm for 11 59 and see whether or not they've made that terrible mistake and a few housing already out they'll tell people hey man we open on such and such day and then they they literally open it at server time because that's how their it technicians set it up so you can literally be the first one uh, but look, it's not like being a child in school. The first person in line for lunch doesn't mean you're going to get a voucher, okay? It just means you got in early. I do expect an overwhelming demand for the state of Michigan for sure, okay? And so there is a potential the website could go down. So I would say that operably, you definitely want to be in the first two hours in case that does happen. And uh, if you want your voucher and response to be processed quicker, you want to be a, a you know ready for this. Do not stop to go do yoga. Don't stop by the local church and all that. Do, do what you need to do in the state of Michigan first, then go take care of your other business, okay? Uh, I can think of a lot of reasons why uh, that happens. Sometimes they even close lists early if there's just too many people. When targeting counties across the state of Michigan to get a voucher, I would advise strongly to avoid uh, big metropolitan areas and choose counties where you know there's a population of a minimum of 50,000 and probably no greater than a half a million, okay? Uh, that has a higher yield. You know, we've had enough, we've done enough metrics over the years to look at cities and vouchers and uh, populations and population densities along with a big homeless population do uh there so what it spells out is there's a greater propensity of issuance in places that don't have a high high level homelessness and or in between certain uh ranges when it comes to population and so if the county is too small or too big you have the lowest odds that you ever would and then you're gonna have a higher range probably the fifty thousand to up to uh half a million so i think that that metric has been very sound and we've looked at the numbers over the years and it still spells true to this day now that's only just a drop in a bucket amongst many things you could potentially do and i would also advise that you not put one egg in one basket if there's an opportunity to apply at surrounding counties then do so now when it comes to portability uh our friend uh, that mentioned earlier daniel mentioned that there are some housing authorities that do require a 12-month lease, okay? Uh, it's 70-30. You're going to get 70% rejection on instant portability, and you're going to get 30% from what I've seen over the years. 30% will accept. You only need one to accept. If you can get a voucher, I know the state of Iowa was real good about that. They would actually issue vouchers many times, and they, they, they're, they're, they'd tell you straight up that we don't care if you port it to the, you know, five states over we just don't care and so do not take that rule of 12 months of a lease to portability to be written in stone because the reality is we've eluded that factor as a company for years in fact there's been many articles published about it many of which have taken the advice from us this company um last thing i'd like to bring up is uh the 27th of April at 9 a.m. and also at 11 a.m., I will be speaker for the Legal Aid Society out in Tampa Bay. Uh, and uh, for part of the U.S., we'll have uh, attorneys, uh, landlords, and so on, and uh, we'll be trading information. So, as you know, attorneys deal in law, obviously, but um, 
they don't specialize in the course of getting vouchers. So it's going to be a kind of an in-depth conversation of how to address things, uh, possibly hear my opinions in, in relation to housing, the markets, and stability, and also kind of get the opinions of attorneys and conclude the two together. You know, even my company works with a law firm out of Dallas uh, because I find that sometimes uh, working with a law firm uh, to get results works out a lot better because it, it, it affords the housing authority a lot less opportunities to make mistakes and act egregiously against those that need this the most. So, well, guys, I've enjoyed talking with you, and uh, I think uh, I think we'll close it out if nobody has anything further. Any questions? Oh, it looks like a whole bunch of comments here. Hold on a minute. So. There was a delay there. Uh, Deborah Payne goes on. Thank you. I've learned so much from you. Jimmy Bennett, love your channel. Hello. Good, good morning, uh, Jim. How are you? Uh, Jeffrey Bleakmore. So I live in Tucson, Arizona. Can I apply for a vouch? I don't see why not. Anytime the government funds something, they have to allow everybody. It can't just be people in a specific area. Shook Shields, been a while. Las Vegas, Nevada, Section 8 waiting list. Open the 20, March 27th. That is correct. Uh, J.Y., my application was put in in March 22nd, 17. Nothing yet. It's Chippewa, Michigan. Still says on waiting list. Uh, J.Y., I would suggest hitting a lot more counties than just one. Guys, you can't just look. Let me be very clear. Even as a, Even with my company, we can't hinge our results on one little old county. You've got to get out there and hit 20, 30, 40, 50 of them. Uh, it doesn't mean you need to move there. Uh, if even only one of them grants portability instantly, then that would allow you to get the voucher to skip the line, okay? Uh, Tabitha Taylor has made several comments. I'm disabled, mentally ill. Okay, well, that goes in a lot of private details, and uh, thanks for sharing that. Uh So she goes on, to, in conclusion of Tabitha Taylor's comments, she has a case manager that knows nothing about COC. Well, then the case manager is probably, if she doesn't know anything about continuum of care or housing first programs, then she's probably the worst case manager alive. Okay, let's just be honest. That'd be like saying, hey, I'm a case manager, but I don't know how to fill out an application. The fact that this person doesn't even know what it is is shocking, but it's not appalling because um, there are many people who don't know how to do their job. Um, Barbara Havens. Thank you. Daniel, uh, Daniel goes on to say you have to apply as many counties. I applied for more than 30 counties and was improved four, five, and less than three months. Well, that's good. J. Ye uh, is on the list now for Michigan. All right, guys, I'm going to post this last link for y'all's application to cover the state of Michigan, and I don't see any further reason to ramble too much. Uh, and as you saw, we had uh, Little Mama there, uh, the kitten or a cat that I have in the video. Y'all probably see more, and I'm going to give you some quick updates. So we have two pregnant cats. One is Siamese, and the other is an orange, my orange one, and uh, one is respectfully named Cheat Miss Chi Chi. That's my orange one, and Miss Busybody, my Siamese. Uh, the orange one, uh, Miss Chi Chi, will be likely having hers in the next couple of weeks, and um, I'll be sharing some live footage of the kittens without disturbing them or throwing them in direct light and all that stuff. Of course, I care for the comfort of the cats, and then I think probably within a month our Siamese will produce. Uh, her own children, and of course, we'll uh, make a little video for that. Um, one thing that's existed as long as this channel has is the fact that I care immensely what happens, whether it's a dog, a cat, a squirrel, whatever. Um, sadly, we have a high death rate on our property uh, because the cats tend to kill things, and that's what they do. Uh, in fact, I found a half a squirrel uh, yesterday, the week before, uh, they killed two birds. They drag it all in the bathroom. The more interesting times is late at night, I went in the bathroom and you have to watch yourself because they brought a copperhead in there. And so uh, they've killed molds and birds and everything else and they do eat them. So uh, I don't interfere with mother nature. And uh, <clears throat> if that's the cat's treats, I know they eat bugs and other things. And so 
I try not to interfere with that process, nor am I going to get up with a flashlight in the middle of the night. So, uh, But if you guys enjoy pets and the care and interest of pets, then you'll enjoy our channel because I'll often include that in there uh, besides just educating them about Section 8 housing HUD, Code of Federal Regulation, and uh, other federal laws and ordinances and uh, speaker events that I do with other legal aid societies and so on. All right, guys. Well, I've enjoyed talking to you all this morning. I'm going to let you go, and we will see you again in a couple of days. Let's see, Tuesday, probably Tuesday morning. And then uh, I'm going to put up a poll today if y'all want to check it out on the channel. So the poll is going to be asking about what y'all like to see a video about. When you've made about eight or 900 of these, uh, I probably talked about every subject matter that can be talked about. So it's kind of a rewash. And so... <clears throat> Uh, maybe we should do something, uh, redo uh, an old topic uh, that's still important uh, and make it relevant 2023. Because as many of you know, uh, policies do change and uh, they change yearly. And of course, they change every election cycle. And uh, so uh, it may be time to refresh some old videos there. All right, guys. Have a great day. Bye-bye.